should be standing at the bar of the lobby as if you were about to order a café con leche or a Cuba Libre. Thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people have stood here before you admiring the imported tile floors, the woodwork, or the French doors. In the open spaces behind you, you will also find portraits of several Cuban patriots, including Jose Martí, General Antonio Maceo, and General Maximo Gomez. When this building first opened in 1918, this lobby bar was set up as a cafe featuring round marble top tables. People would gather here before and after events in the theater, providing an atmosphere reminiscent of cultural life in Old Havana, or the new fashionable Havana neighborhood that flourished at that time called El Vedado. The Cuban immigrants who settled in Ybor City were well-educated workers who had grown accustomed to life in Havana, one of the most beautiful cultural centers of the Western Hemisphere. This building itself evoked the memories of the Havana they had left behind, but it also served to make their lives in the United States more comfortable. The Cubans who settled in Ybor City in the late 19th century brought with them a long tradition of mutual aid. Two mutual aid societies had been created in Havana in the 1880s, and Cuban emigres in Key West formed the Instituto de San Carlos in 1871. The early days of the new community called Ybor City the unhealthy climate and unsanitary conditions presented serious health problems for the workers who received no medical benefits from their employers. Drawing on a tradition of mutual aid, the Cubans created El Circulo Cubano to bind all Cuban residents of Tampa into a fraternal group and to offer assistance and help the sick. In 1908, under the presidency of Dr. Alfredo Colli, the Cuban club opened a Seccion de Beneficencia to provide medical assistance and services to its members. During the golden age of the Cuban club, that is to say, from 1920s to the 1950s, members came here for the best entertainment in the city. The Cuban club hosted plays, operas, concerts, and boxing matches. In the early days of Ybor City, when the workers lived in small, wood-framed homes called casitas, there was no air conditioning, no radio or television, and no telephones and certainly no computers. So you can imagine the excitement that swept over Ybor City when a great musical entertainer like Celia Cruz, or Cuban composer Ernesto Lecuona, or a great boxer like Kid Chocolate, came to the Cuban club. Athletic events were just as important, if not more so, than the social and cultural events here. When this building first opened in 1918, there was a gymnasium on the first floor. The club also fielded soccer and baseball teams to compete in city leagues. The competition in baseball was by far the most intense. The club that won the city championship enjoyed bragging rights for the year. Every year, the Havana Cubans would come here to play the Tampa Smokers it was the major sporting event of the season, like Super Bowl. Everyone came to Plant Field to watch the game. And boxing matches, wow, they were equally popular. During the 1920s and 30s, the Cuban club featured boxing matches on a specially constructed ring in the patio on the west side of this building. At the center of this building, however, lies a 350-seat theater, once the heart 
of Cuban American culture in Tampa Bay. Now please enter the double doors to the right of the lobby bar.